Taking photos at night, particularly street photography at night, is something that I've done only a little of in the past. But to be honest, it's something I'd like to get much, much better at. Because I really love that kind of cool, cinematic, nighttime photography look. So last week, I spent as many nights as I could trying to get out and shoot some nighttime street photography. Just try and see how much I could learn. And that's exactly what I'm going to be talking about today. So the reason I wanted to make this video this week is because in winter, at least where I live, is really dark. Cold weather and the rain, I'm at least a little okay with that part of winter, but the darkness of the days and the mornings is the part I really struggle with. They just make it really difficult to get out and do anything. And throughout the years with my photography, that's been the case as well. I've always tended to avoid going out to shoot at nighttime, especially during the winter. And I kind of wanted to amend that this week by going out and like actually focusing on practicing some nighttime street photography. The other reason for this video is because I see so much like really cool, really nice nighttime photography online. A lot of that almost cinematic style of photo that is like perfectly suited for nighttime street photography. And I wanted to see if I could maybe get out and try and take some photos like that myself, or to at least use that as some inspiration. And I did. I got a little bit sick during the week, so I didn't get to go out every night, but I spent two nights this week out and about the city, shooting as much as I could and trying to learn as much as I could as well. Some things I already knew and of course they benefited from the practice and some things I discovered for the first time. So here's my experiences and maybe they can help you a little bit as well. So just because it's dark outside doesn't mean that light is irrelevant all of a sudden. Actually it didn't really take me long to realize that light is everything when it comes to shooting at night. Because it's so dark outside, I found that finding my subject in the frame was really hard unless it was illuminated by some type of light source. So it very quickly became a case of trying to find whatever ambient light source I could find and seeing how that could light up my scene. The classic thing I heard a lot when I was researching for this video and researching how to take photos at night was the phrase to follow the light. And I found that to be pretty true. It was all about finding whatever light is there and using that to light the photo. Either through like backlighting a subject or maybe even as a nice pop of light to the side of a subject. But another thing that I found interesting with light at nighttime was the color of it. It's something I think you don't notice as much during the day because obviously light is just like much more prominent at nighttime I guess and generally you also have just much more ambient light at nighttime. Things like traffic lights, neon lines, street signs, and these were all really colorful sources of light, like scattered around the city. And it was fun to try and incorporate those into my photos as much as I could. Try and use them to create maybe just a little bit of extra interest in my photos. The next thing, and maybe even the biggest thing that I noticed over the last week was just that everything is a little bit trickier when it comes to taking photos at night. So slowing down my process really helped me a lot. Because of the lack of lighting, I guess, and just the diversity of lighting available, I found myself changing my settings way more than I would during the day. My surroundings changed much more as well, which also meant the same thing. So for that reason, I found it really hard to do what I usually do during the day, and that's to just like power through my photos and like almost speed walk around town. But at nighttime, I had to really slow down a little bit to, to get things right. If anything, it was maybe like a mini lesson that I could use during the day as well to just slow things down a little bit and take my time a little bit more. Something that was also good for me this week uh, that goes hand in hand with taking it slow, I would say, is to know your surroundings before you head out to shoot. As much as I love to explore new places, new cities, new parts of town during the day, I found this much more difficult to do at nighttime. And because everything else was just a little bit trickier at night, 
knowing where I was going and knowing where I was was one less thing that I didn't have to have in my head. When it was dark, walking around town with my gear and my camera was a little bit uncomfortable anyway, and not knowing my surroundings or not knowing where I was going definitely wouldn't have helped with that. So if you can, I would recommend doing a little bit of research before you head out to shoot, or maybe just going there once or twice during the day before you decide to go there at night time. I had seen in the research I did beforehand and on other YouTube channels that I was watching and that was to underexpose my photos in camera. This became pretty intuitive when I was actually out shooting because I quickly saw that losing my shadows was a lot better than blowing out my highlights. With such a contrast of light available and by shooting handheld I think there had to be some compromise and by underexposing a little bit I was also making sure that my viewfinder wasn't lying to me. Another reason for keeping my photos just a little bit darker was like what I said at the beginning, it was to go for that cinematic type of look. And by keeping it a little bit darker, it was just making the photos just a little bit more dramatic. This one again seems kind of obvious, but I struggled with it quite a bit during the week, and that is to remember to keep your subject in mind. I noticed that when I got out, the lighting around the city was so strong and so striking that often it took so much of my attention. And it distracted me so much that I sometimes just forgot about my subject. I was just kind of aimlessly photographing every ambient light that I saw, and as a result of this, I kind of just ended up shooting a lot of the same type of photos, or my photos like lacked a little bit of feeling or personality or something and they were just like a little bit boring to me. This maybe sounds silly but it took me a little bit of effort to remind myself that it's still really important to find a subject in the frame and to think about what you want that photograph to say. Now to be fair sometimes there was cases where the light is just interesting enough that that in itself is the subject of the photograph, if that makes sense. Or maybe like a better way to put it is that the body that's emitting the light is interesting enough to be the subject of the photograph. But I definitely had to be careful not to get too carried away and too distracted. Now those were the biggest lessons I learned during my week of nighttime photography, but there were definitely some other small little bits that helped as well. For that little extra touch, say. I used these mist filters to help soften the light a little bit, and for that like halation effect around light sources. I love these filters. I use them a lot when I'm out shooting videos. So for these photographs, for that like cinematic look that I was going for, I wanted to try and use these as well. That I think they helped with that. I think I talk about this in almost every single video now, but another thing that I tried was of course motion blur. Nighttime is perfect for motion blur because there's so many different light sources around different colors, as I mentioned. And because it's dark, it's just natural to slow your shutter speed down a bit anyway. Even some of the photographs that I was taking when I wasn't going for a motion blur effect, the shutter is so low that there's a little bit in there anyway. And to me, that's fine. I quite like that style. I like when there's a little bit of movement in the photo. For me, that was totally fine. As for my settings, well, I tried not to get like too caught up in this or too nitpicking. I obviously kept my aperture as wide as possible to try and get the most light through my lens as I could. I kept my shutter speed at around 100 of a second, give or take a little bit, depending on the shot. And my ISO was usually hovering at about about a thousand or sixteen hundred um, maybe even a little bit more or less honestly I wasn't that afraid of the noise I hear a lot of people talking about like oh their camera can't handle the noise at night time but I didn't worry about it too much because I think it's just a part of shooting at night time and honestly I, I really don't mind that look anyway and Lightroom's new AI noise removal tool is pretty amazing now anyways so if you really wanted to get rid of it you could probably make a good attempt at it there if i had the chance i would have liked a little bit more dramatic weather maybe some fog or some rain um, i think weather always adds a little bit more drama and atmosphere to photos so that would have been nice but unfortunately the weather was just pretty normal throughout the week so i didn't get the chance for that and finally one of the most important things to mention is just to remember to stay safe out there. When I was out there during the week, I was surprised at how exposed and uncomfortable I felt, like in the dark with my gear on me. So I would definitely recommend to take care of yourself. Use your common sense, don't flash around super expensive gear, and stick to the parts of town that you know. Um, it was still totally fine, but just 
uncomfortable in ways so i would say just be careful with that too be safe and enjoy your photography as always but maybe even more so for this type of video i would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below any other tips for nighttime photography please let me know thanks again for watching i really appreciate everybody tuning in to check out these videos and i'll be back again soon see ya